Get It is a great way to formatively assess students. And what I love about Get It is that it's student-centered. And what I mean by that is it's different from other formative assessment tools where you're just asking kids questions and they're answering them. What Get It also includes is a way for students to check in about their understanding, their confidence with the topic, and it's a really anonymous way for them to share with you how they're feeling. So let's take a look at how Get It works. Let's start by signing up by going to letsgetit.com and clicking on Get Started for free. Next, I'm going to choose that I'm a teacher and sign up for an account by giving them my name, email address, and clicking Get Account. Next, I'll click on Add Your First Class, and let's just use an example by calling this Hour One Create Class. Next, we're going to take a look at what I would do as a student when I'm ready to sign up. So we took a look at teacher sign up. Now let's take a look at student sign up. As a student, I'm going to go to letsgetit.com on my iPad, just like my teacher did on their Mac. So here's what Get It looks like on the iPad. I'm going to click Student. What's great is I'm able to sign up with my Google My Panthers account. So I'll click on that, and all I have to do is enter my My Panther username and password to sign up. All right, now that I'm logged in, I'm going to accept Get It to my account. And what it's going to ask me as a student is to enter a class code to join the class. So let's flip back to teacher mode, and you can see where I get that code so that I can give it to my students. So I'll tell my students that code, and then the students on their iPad will enter that code and automatically join the right class. So when I enter this and click join as a student, I'm automatically enrolled in first hour. All right, so now that I, as a teacher, am all set up and my students are all signed up and enrolled in my class, let's go ahead and talk about how we're actually going to use Get It in our classrooms. Um, so let's pretend I have a lesson coming up and I want to make sure that this is something that I really have a good gauge on the students understanding. Okay, so as a teacher, underneath the hour that lesson will be occurring, I'm going to go ahead and click New Lesson. All right, I'm going to title this lesson The Five Themes of Geography because I know that's something that our geography teachers teach. So let's pretend I'm doing a lesson on the five themes of geography. Maybe it's review, maybe it's the first time I'm teaching it. Kind of works either way. Now, if I want students to be able to check in throughout the lesson, I'm going to add topic or activity. So I could do a really general topic like the five themes of geography. So maybe I want my students to be able to check in on overall, how are they getting this lesson? Maybe instead I want to also do multiple activities. So I could put a topic for when I teach about location. I could put in a topic for when I teach about place and I could have the kids check in about each individual category. It's really up to you as a teacher if you want to get really specific about the topics or if you'd rather um, get more general and have the kids kind of check in overall. That's up to you. So you can do multiple topics in a single lesson or just one topic. I also want to be able to not only get the kids confidence check in, but also be able to ask them some comprehension questions. So to click or to add a question, um, I go ahead and click prepare a question and then I add my text. So you see my question there, if I plant a tree, what theme would this be an example of? So that's a comprehension question I could ask kids to get whether or not they're really understanding the five themes of geography. I have the option to add a picture. So maybe I have a diagram, maybe I have a chart, depending on the type of question. For this one, I just have a generic picture of people planting a tree. Then I can do short answer, I could do poll, or I could do multiple choice. For multiple choice, it auto grades. So let's go ahead and put in the first, um, first theme, not the first theme, but one of the themes. And this is the correct answer, so I'm going to click the check mark next to that. Um, and I can put in all the other options and we'll leave it at that for now. When I'm done, I'll click save question. And now I've got that comprehension question. Just like with topics and activities, I can add as many comprehension questions as I want. So if I want the kids to answer multiple comprehension questions, I can, I can put a whole bunch in there. If I just want one or two as a check-in, I can do that too. Now as a teacher, when I'm ready to start teaching, I'm going to click Start Teaching, <laughs> and then as a student, right now it says you're ready to go. We're just waiting for your teacher to start a lesson. 
So we'll go ahead and start teaching. And now you'll see as a student, um, my screen will change. So we can tell that the lesson has begun, okay? At this point, as a student, I can check in right away, even before the teacher puts up the first topic. If I just want to let the teacher know how things are going for me, I can do that. Um, but for the sake of this example, we'll go ahead and actually have the teacher start the first topic. Okay, so I'm as a teacher, I'm going to click start. And what I'm doing here is I'm prompting the kids to check in and tell me how the lesson is going for them. So as a student, I'm going to have this check-in table. It's going to say five themes of geography, and I'm going to tap the bars to check in. So when it comes to the five themes of geography, how am I feeling? I could give a one, I don't understand, all the way up to a five, which means it's easy. I can teach a friend I've totally mastered this topic. I can also add a comment. So let's say I've given myself a four, I've got this, and you know I write something like I could help a partner. Or on the flip side, if I'm really not getting it and I give it, I give myself say a one, then I might write something like, wow, I really am not understanding location. I need more examples of location. And that's going to be anonymous information to my teacher versus raising my hand and saying, oh, you know, sometimes kids are a little apprehensive about doing that in front of their friends. Instead, this is an anonymous way for me to check in with the teacher and let them know how things are going. When I'm ready, I click check in. And as a teacher, what's going to happen is all of my students are going to be listed along the left here, and I'm going to get real-time feedback about how they're feeling about the topic. Um, the colors will change depending on the answer I give. So let's go back and say, five minutes later, I, you lost me. You know, I can check in again. I'm going to change it to a one and say, you know, I'm just not getting this. I really, I, I, you lost me. That new, that new topic is not working for me. I can check in again, and as a student, I can see my progress below. Like, I was really getting it, and now 10 minutes later, I'm not getting it. The teacher can also see that color change. I went from a green to a red. 10 minutes later, I might check in again, and, oh, you explained it to me. I get it now. You explained it again, and now, now it's clicking. Check in, and you'll notice that I changed to a blue. So it goes all the way. It goes red, yellow, green, blue. Um, as a teacher, you may want a prompt when you want the kids to check in. You don't want them checking in every, you know, two minutes. But maybe some key points at the beginning, maybe the middle, and then at the end, you could prompt the kids to check in and let you know how things are going. All right. Then we also have the portion where we can ask the kids our comprehension questions. Each individual question can be prompted at different times. So you don't have to ask them all at once. You could ask, you know, throughout the period as you're teaching things, or you could Go ahead and ask them all at once. Since we only have one question, we'll go ahead and just click ask for that. On the student view, that question pops up on my iPad. I can read the question and see the picture. When I'm ready to answer, I'll click answer question. And the options will pop up. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the wrong answer. Okay, so I'm going to hit place. As a student, I'll hit answer question. And then I'm going to get immediate feedback. I'm going to see that I answered the question incorrectly, and I'm going to also see the right answer. So this would be a really formative way for the student to gauge their understanding and also for you to see whether or not they're getting it. So this is not like a quiz where you may want the kid to be able to go back and change their answer. This is really a quick check-in um, to see where the kids are at at various points throughout the lesson. Um, so as a teacher, Let's go back, and um, I'm going to see that the responses came in, and I can click here and get responses for every kid in my classroom. So I'm going to see their response. I'm going to see it's red, which means they got it wrong. If they answered it correctly, it would be green. And also another part I love about Get It is I rated myself a five. I'm blue, but I answered the question wrong. I'm red. So as a teacher, I can get some red flags about whether or not a kid's really overestimating their understanding. Um, and those might be some kids where I really want to check in with them and make sure, you know, that they really get what it is that they're understanding and what they're not. All right. 
So as a teacher, when the lesson is over and I'm ready to end it, I'm going to go ahead and click End Lesson. And then I'm going to get some really um, comprehensive feedback. So if I click here, I'm going to see overall the whole class, and keep in mind there's only one student, so it's keep that in mind and see it for what it is. But I'm going to get overall breakdown of how my kids are feeling. And I can also see over time. So over time, what are the trends? When we first started, kids weren't really getting it, but that trend upped as the lesson went. If you see a big dip at some point, um, you know, maybe you can remember that, ooh, I really didn't explain that in a way that was helpful for my students. Um, I'm going to get a flag for kids who may not understand based on the way they answered the question. So I'll get a list of all the kids who might need some reteaching or a peer to model to them or something along those lines. I'm going to get responses overall for my entire class about the questions that I asked. And then I also have a spot for me to just leave my reflections. So maybe I need to remember next year I need to be more explicit about or tomorrow I need to reteach. Okay, so these are just kind of places for me to reflect. You could do this here or you could do this if you do that somewhere else already. You know, whatever works for you. But I can save that reflection. Also, as a student, I can go back to that lesson after it's closed and I can get some feedback about my own understanding. So I, this will not show the whole class. This will just be my information. I can see um, my check-ins. I can see my check-ins over time and how I was understanding or not. So I have that big dip and, you know, it's kind of a self-evaluation. I can scroll down and see how I answered the questions and also see the correct question. Um, you know, so I can kind of have an opportunity as a student to do some self-reflection about my own understanding. All right, so that is Get It, which is a formative tool for you to gauge your students' understanding, both based on their own impressions and their, their self-reflections, and also based on objective data through the use of check-in questions or short answers. Um, it's a great way for you to make real-time adjustments in your classroom because you get immediate feedback from the kids and you can really base your groupings, base your reteachings, or base the way that your lesson progresses based on that data um, to make sure that you're meeting the kids' needs at the time that they need it. All right, I hope you appreciated this screencast. We'll see you later.